Hello, and welcome to the Movement Enthusiast Podcast. I'm your host, Brianna Sakala. This podcast is all about movement and the wonderful changes you can make to your physical and mental well being simply by implementing movement into your everyday life. In this series, you will get to know many other movement enthusiasts who have influenced me and inspired me to get out there and get moving. Today's guest is a dear friend of mine, Jess Miller. Jess is an aerial yoga artist and stand-up paddleboard yoga instructor who is traditionally trained as a Hatha yoga teacher. Jess recently opened up a yoga studio in downtown Tarpon Springs with her best friend, who happens to be my lovely sister. Gypsy Air is a beautiful community where you can find traditional yoga flow classes and some not so traditional classes, like aerial yoga, the trendy booty yoga, chair yoga, and hoop and fusion yoga. And without further ado, a big thank you and welcome to Jess. Hi Jess, thank you for joining me today. Hi Brie. So we're here at Gypsy Air and Co. Um, in the cozy little massage room with some nice throat chakra incense burning. Jess just went through a little breathing exercise with me and it really, really helped kind of ground us and get us ready for this interview. So um, we're going to start with the same question I'm always going to start with, and that is, when was the last time you moved or did yoga or exercise? Um, This morning, actually. We did a little flow before we left the house, so I've kind of been moving all day, and then I got here and just been waiting on you, so I've been hanging out. What kind of flow was it? Just a short, like, five, ten minute flow where inhale, exhale, forward fold, stretch out the hips a little bit, and then kind of just ended it and gave myself a little, hey, you're going to have a badass day. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Yes. So it's like something like on a Monday morning, especially it's like super invigorating and like it really gets your day going right. Absolutely. Especially Monday because it's your day of like start the week strong and get all your stuff done. (laughs) The toughest day sometimes. Yes. Get out of bed. So give me a little bit of a background about your childhood. Were you active as a kid? A little bit. I wasn't the biggest fan of sports um, because it just was took up a lot of time, and we did a lot of like outdoor activities when we were younger. Um, But I did cheerleading for a really long time in high school, so that kind of prepared me for all of the like flipping, tricking kind of stuff that I really enjoy now. Um, And I did a little bit of softball, which was good, but never stuck. And I like to run, so I always was running and doing stuff like that when I was younger. That's awesome. I was a cheerleader too. Were you? I could never flip or really do the splits or anything. Really? But yeah, no splits for me when I was younger. But I love the flipping and the tumbling and that part of it. That's awesome. I never would have guessed you were a cheerleader. Really? Yeah. yeah. I wasn't the best cheerleader because I wasn't all about the like team spirit. Because I like you know was more into reading and stuff like that. But I liked the sport. <laughs> to me, it was fun. And you grew up in New Jersey, right? Um, Well, New York and New Jersey. I kind of swapped back and forth throughout my childhood. I lived with my parents um, at my dad's house, and then I lived with my mom at her place. So I kind of did both. And I did them in both New York and New Jersey cheerleading, but for, like, the high school and stuff. Did you find, like, your parents telling you, like, when you were like, I'm bored, like, go outside and play? Kind of, yeah. But we were outside all the time because that's just what we did, and we lived where you could do that. In the summertime, we were on the beach. In the wintertime, we would go skiing and do stuff like that. So. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So what brought you into yoga? Hmm. Um, when I was younger, the breath, I had a guidance counselor. Um, I was having a hard time taking tests and staying focused because I had a lot of background noise going on when I was younger. And she introduced me to the breath. And I didn't really get the movement 100%, but then one of our cheerleading coaches offered to teach yoga during gym practice, and we started playing around, and I never took it serious because it was just like, oh, look, I can do this. Oh, look, I can do that. Um, and so then I kind of lost it for a while, and then I came back to it when I was a little bit older, when I was like 18, 19, and I was like, all right, and it stuck. And I didn't do a lot of practice in the studio. It was a lot of like at-home practice like YouTube videos and friends being like, oh, let me show you what I learned. But it kind of started when I was younger, left, and then came back. So what was your teacher training experience like when you finally decided to just dive in and become an instructor? 
Wow. Um, my teaching experience. Well, at first I wasn't ready to sign up for teacher training. Brandy actually was like, oh, we're doing this. And I was like, we're doing what? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, we're doing it. I was like, I don't know. I don't really have too much experience. And then Faith was like, you're going to love it. This is going to like really show you what yoga is about. And you can, even if you don't teach, you can just have like a better understanding of what you're doing. So I was like, all right, I'll sign up. And I did. And the first couple of weeks I was like, what are they even saying? Like, what are we, I don't know this stuff. Like, not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. And then I went home and read for like the whole weekend. And I was like, okay, this stuff is cool. Let's go back for more. And I loved it. I had a really rough time though during our training because my grandfather had passed away. So I find like that community and having all those people there and like knowing what I was going through and knowing that we had to finish this like really hardcore like six months of yoga. They were like, all right, we got your back. And it kind of just really led me into this beautiful place of like, it's not just the moves. It's not just the breath. Like you create community. It's something that you have in common with others. And it was really cool. So uh, I got a really great group of teachers and awesome yogis that I learned with. So it was amazing. Oh, that's so nice. That like just gave me goosebumps listening <laughs> to that. Because it's yeah. so true. Like it really is like, it can be a community if you let it be. Yeah, absolutely. And you end up learning and growing by creating this like openness because you're practicing something that is now like you're having emotional breakdowns, physical breakdowns, like your body is just like, oh my God, I'm tired, but it still wants more. And you just go through all of this transformation and these people are here the whole time. And they're so positive because they're also practicing yoga and they want to learn. So they're sharing their like knowledge with you. So it's like a really cool energy exchange instead of just being there sucking you dry or giving you too much. Right. You feel like you're like, why did I even do this? Yeah. So so. it started off rough, but you came out on top. Of course. So once you were done with your training, was it difficult to like start getting into studios and um, becoming a teacher? Um, So when I first stopped our yoga teacher training, I fell like right back in Faith's hands. And she was like, now that you're certified, like, let's put you on the schedule. So I started teaching pretty much immediately. And then we did the first yoga in the park and everybody who never practiced yoga was like, we're supporting Jess. And then all these people showed up and you, you were there. I love yoga in the park. I know. And that was what really like threw me into the whole, okay, you're going to teach like, that's going to be your thing. And it wasn't hard to get a job because everybody was like, Oh, come help here or sub here. And so that was nice. And I did a lot of the Dharma yoga. So the free yoga in the park, I did the community college yoga up in PHSC, um, and it kind of just kept rolling from there. That's awesome. You even were at the um, the Tropicana Field with the Rays, right? Yes. I actually did that for Angela while she was pregnant because they needed someone to sub out for her, so I was oh, there. that's so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know you eventually, um, you started to spark an interest in aerial yoga. What made you interested in the aerial arts side of it? The silks. I started with the silks. I got them for Christmas one year, and I couldn't learn without watching YouTube so I had to like really sit there and kind of try to teach myself and I was like there has to be a better way so I reached out for the aerial yoga community and that's when I found k in Clearwater um, and I started taking classes there and as soon as I took my first class I, they were doing the certification and I was like yes like now I don't have to watch videos anymore someone can actually show me I can learn so it started pretty much with the silks and then went into hammocks, which was really cool. And you just like had a desire just to like learn for yourself and then you eventually trained to become an instructor. Yes. I just wanted to learn more. Couldn't stop. (laughs) It's very addictive, huh? Yes. It is though. Once you're in those silks swinging around, you're just like, oh, I want to do it again and again. It's very freeing. Like every time I get in there, I just don't think about anything about except for movement. You listen to the music, you just keep going, it's fun, it could be kind of sexy, and then you're done and you're like super tired, but it feels good because your body's moving. It's such a workout too. I remember leaving a couple of your classes and like my arms were just on fire and I'm just like, I'm working muscles, I feel like I haven't, like they've just been sitting there unworked for so long. Absolutely. A lot of core strength, a lot of upper body strength, and that all comes over time, so it's kind of nice having like a yoga practice to start because then you kind of have something to build on Mm -hmm. which is really cool and I think one of the awesome things about Ariel is like when you're showing everybody in class a move 
it might be a little bit more difficult, but it like fuels you to be like, I want to get this move down. And then once yes. you do, you have such a sense of accomplishment and you're just like, oh, I did it. Yeah. It's like such a fun feeling. Mm-hmm. So I know you went on a retreat in Sarasota with Margie Pargy, who is, um, she's a YouTuber and an aerial teacher as well, right? Yes, the aerial yoga goddess. Yes, the goddess. I thought that her name was like the unicorn or something, so I was trying to <laughs> Google her under unicorn yoga aerial, but... I'm sure there was a picture of her in a unicorn <laughs> outfit somewhere. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about this experience. It was amazing. It's what threw aerial yoga into a whole different realm for me. Um, I seen you like as soon as I came back, I was vibrating on the, a crazy high of just awesomeness. Oh, I remember. Yeah, the girls were so badass and fun and strong and beautiful and different shapes and sizes and different ages. And it just was so, like, I'm getting used to thinking mm-hmm. about it. Like, the energy, oh, we were in Sarasota. It's the heart chakra because the rose quartz in the sand. And we did meditations on the beach. We did yoga classes on the beach. Margie did aerial like by the poolside. And it just was like this amazing weekend of just fun. We learned hooping. We did all different kind of things that I really enjoy. And it was a whole weekend indulged in it. There is no boys, just the ladies. And it was really a lot of fun. And I came home and I was like, now I know what I want. We did a lot of circles where we discussed like our future and what we see, our practice transforming into and it really gave me a lot of inspiration to move forward and keep doing what I was doing full-time and not just on the side it's safe to say at that retreat you were in a way manifesting gypsy air yeah like you saw the vision yeah I wrote it down in one of my books actually (laughs) that that we were opening up something or that I was going to create some kind of team so that we can do what it is we want to do that we've been talking about for years so i definitely was manifesting while we were there. That's just amazing. Like the power of just putting it out there. Yeah, absolutely. Or even just writing something down because we didn't even have to say it out loud. And I didn't. We just journaled for, we sat down in our little circle and she gave us a few questions that we should ask ourselves and share. And I decided I wasn't going to share because I wasn't really sure how I felt about what I wrote down. Mm -hmm. And I just wrote it down. And then the next thing I knew, we were I was home and we started doing this. So it's just been crazy. Oh, that's so amazing, though. It's so inspiring. So would you recommend a retreat? Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah, I would definitely recommend a retreat. Whether it be you going and getting your certification in, like, an exotic location and just really putting the time to be alone and away from, like, social media and away from your everyday life to really indulge in what yoga is about. Even if it's aerial yoga or acro yoga, just getting away for a few days and just shutting everything else off and just spending time with like-minded humans, it can really be inspiring. That would be a really nice way to learn self. Like, who who am I and what is it that I really, like, need slash want from the universe? And... It's without the energies that you're used to being around. So you really kind of quiet in because you don't have a lot of things to talk about with these new humans at first. Mm -hmm. And some of the retreats you go on are silent. Some of the retreats you go on are like these loud, crazy goddesses. So sometimes you like curl in for a minute because you're like, wow, there's a lot of energy here. Um, So it's a really good way to meet yourself. Go alone to a retreat. I love that. I love how you say that, to meet yourself. Yeah. I know that you had like a couple other jobs, like you bartended for a while. When were you actually able to just work with yoga alone? Like how long would you say it took? Um, About three years because it was only until about last year that I went full yoga all the way. And this was only working for all the other studios. It was before Gypsy Air was even created. And I had hit a point where I was teaching probably like 17 to 18 classes a week. Oh my goodness. And then doing privates on the side. So I had like been teaching all kinds of classes and I finally was like, okay, well, I'm putting my all in. I don't have any any extra energy and I'm making enough that I can just kind of sustain. So I want to say it took about three years until I was finally like, okay, bye bartending gig. See you (laughs) when I need you. Yeah. So it, it took a while, but it definitely took a lot of work. And I know that 
as a friend of mine, you've probably seen that, like, there was no just time, and I just... Oh, yeah, you were always on the go. Yeah, spreading myself almost thin, but doing what I loved, so I didn't really think of it at the time, so I really enjoyed it. So although your schedule kind of got a little bit busier, it was more fulfilling. Yeah, absolutely. So it was easy to say goodbye to the side jobs. Yeah, and the things that weren't making me happy, and that was definitely bartending, because... It's just not the environment I wanted to be in mm-hmm. where you're creating wellness and clear head and then you step into a different environment where people are not clear headed. It kind of throws you off a little bit. Fast forwarding to today, now you have this beautiful studio, Gypsy Air & Co. Um, just tell us about Gypsy Air. Like, When did you start actually working on this project for real? Um, the work wasn't really put in necessarily for the studio. I think all the work that I had been doing, the classes that I was teaching, the workshops that I was taking, the meeting people that I was doing, I think it was all leading up to something. And then after a sup yoga class at the Bayou, Todd was like, hey, this beautiful space is for rent and I happen to know the person. And the space kind of was almost presented to me. And I instantly started working because I knew that it's something I wanted, but I didn't know how we were going to figure it. So I went in kind of not really sure, and we came out and kind of it was created. I mean, you kind of watched the whole thing. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It was crazy. It was awesome to see the transformation. Yeah, it was like all of a sudden there was this empty building, and then the next thing I knew we were moving in. It was just presented, it really... So it almost sort of just like kind of fell into your hands. Yeah, pretty Like much. it was like just by pure connection and chance. Yes, and we weren't sure because at first I think we all said no. <laughs> and then eventually we were like, this is what we were meant to do, let's do it. So it all came together. Was it scary to take that dive? It was the most terrifying and still is the most terrifying thing I've ever done. And I traveled in the RV by myself (laughs) for a long time and I was never scared. And this some days can really be scary because when you put everything that you do into something so extreme, you know, you don't know what's going to happen and where you're going to come out on top, underneath maybe just fine, but you just don't know. And each day is like a new challenge, which is cool. Yeah, but you guys have been keeping busy, right? Yeah, oh my gosh, (laughs) this place has been keeping us very busy. We have gotten a lot of people that are new to yoga because we're like the first, not the first yoga studio in the community, but the first loudest yoga studio in the community. We've really put in a lot of time and effort meeting the community. We have really been here for a while, so... We've been pretty busy for somebody who's only open for about two to three months. We've seen a lot of faces. Oh, that's so great, though. Yeah, it's really been wonderful. And the community has been so supportive. Tarpon Springs, all the bit local business owners are have either been in here just to see it or are telling people in the neighborhood about it. So it's been really awesome. So they definitely have your back. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Of course. And then we have Chad at Two Frogs. And he's always telling people about it. And I have people walk in. They're like, oh, we know you do yoga and beer. And we wanted to see your space. So, Oh, that's awesome. And Chad's little brewery is the cutest. Oh, my gosh. It's amazing. His beer is really good. His vibe in there is very homey. And you just, everybody in there is always good people. It's really an awesome. It's very laid back. Yes. And it's great that you guys are both, you know, local business owners and you can collaborate like that young business owners he's the youngest brewer in the state of florida that's amazing Mm -hmm. he was like what are you going to do before you open up your yoga studio teach yoga and beer here and (laughs) we haven't left each other since (laughs) well it's really fun too you know because you have that incentive throughout class and you're like well let me just make it through and then i can get a little beer yes (laughs) yes reward yourself it's crazy too because people who would never do yoga before they may have like a beer with Chad and he'd be like hey stay for yoga and beer and then we pull in with mats and they're like I'm gonna try this so (laughs) it's really cool to see how it creates a different type of community but also still a very strong community we've been doing yoga and beer for about a year and it's been strong and it's almost a very familiar group every time and it's something that they look forward to every Thursday because not only do you give yourself a break you get to have a beer, you get to hang out mm-hmm. with friends. Sometimes we have the live music. So it really is the best part of 
community here in Turpin. So what would you say are your most popular classes at the studio? Um, Right now, a lot of the restorative classes, um, people really need to relax, and I don't think they realize that. And Sherry teaches a beautiful class on Monday nights, um, and it's just people are, like, talking about it like crazy, and they've been spreading it in the other classes, and so people have been kind of like, oh, what is this restorative you talk about? So the restorative classes have been really great. The aerial yoga has been blowing up. The classes are filling almost every week and it's women, men, shapes, sizes, age groups, completely different and everyone just wants to try it because they see these colorful fabrics hanging from the ceiling and they're like, does this thing hold me? Can I do this? And so it's just, I feel like that class has really kicked off, especially for me too as an aerial yoga teacher. There's a lot of like, can I do that? Or I'm afraid to do that. And to see that this community has taken to it so well has like really made me feel great and really is cool because it's something that they need. And there's a lot of things that you can get from it that you can't get from a practice on the mat. Definitely. Yeah. And I know you're starting up children's yoga for after school. This week it starts, which is really exciting. I'm so excited. I will be here with Selena for sure. Good. And um, you have Rodney. Rodney Valley, yes. He is a NFL retired NFL player. Um, he played for the Bucks um, and a few other teams. He's amazing. He does a lot of um, plyometrics, and he's been practicing yoga now on his own, and it's truly transformed his body, his mind. He was really heavy because he had been injured, so he started working with the Swamp Yeti, and they were doing a lot of like hard workouts that were really a lot on his body, and then he was introduced to yoga, and now he's trying to kind of spread that and say like, you know, you don't have to beat up your body to get what you need. Like you can practice slow movements, hold longer breaths. Like he really is, he's awesome. Sounds and like he has a true passion for it. Yes, he loves it. And he sweats on the mat with you. So it's like he's there with you the whole time. And he's really awesome. That sounds like a really inspiring class. Yeah, and he's a lot of fun. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so funny. Like, how did you guys come in contact? Um, so I met Twyla and Chris Cole from the Swamp Yeti products, um, Swamp Yeti Nation, um, about two or three years ago. Um, actually, he came in with some of his products to the bar that I was working at. And and um, we talked there, and then I was getting my tattoo done at the shop in Tarpon, and he walked in, and we talked the whole session. It was like a three and a half hour session, and him and Twyla stayed there, just like shooting with me and just talking all kinds of stuff. What and, are the odds? Yeah, and so a couple of years later, I op- we opened up this place, and she reached out and was like, hey, you're a new yoga studio. We carry these awesome CBD products, and then we realized it was each other. <laughs> and we're like, hey, she's like, Jess, I'm like, Twyla. So we finally made that reconnection and they introduced us to Rodney because they've been working really like hard alongside him since they've started building their products, which it's, is really cool. It's like another example of just the community. And over years of connecting with people, I have made so many different connections, whether it be through yoga or the tattoo shop or the dive community or any kind of activity we've met so many people and it's all comes back around which is really it just the universe yes you, yeah. you've got to love it i'm gonna end with um a few different questions okay the first being what has been your biggest challenge my biggest challenge um self-care um because when you get into a state of this like hot you're vibing high you're always on the go you're doing what you love and it feels good but there's always that you're pushing to that point and the ego starts to get there and you're like okay I need to almost perform whereas that's not what yoga is about it's about taking the time being present staying focused doing what's good for you and so sometimes I find it I'm the last one that I take care of And I find that that's probably the most challenging part of being in the yoga community, yoga teacher, and just being me sometimes. You're spreading so much love that you're forgetting (laughs) to give some back to yourself. Yes, but we've been working on that strongly, so. Well, good. That's awesome. Um, The next question, a little more positive, what's been your biggest triumph? Oh, wow. So the travel, 
the travel time that I took in the RV and just taking time to just get whatever it is that I wanted out of life. And I was able to sustain for over three and a half years living in an RV, traveling and moving around, and then coming somewhere and being able to create something like this. I've just, the last couple of years have been really awesome, full of accomplishments, so many. I'm so grateful for everybody that supports me all the time and is always here for me and I don't know I just lots of love all the time that's like you have so much gratitude inside of you I do and it just like beams from you you are just one of those people I feel like so many people are drawn to you because you just have like such a caring energy about you yeah it's my favorite part of me (laughs) (laughs) I love it too. (laughs) thank you so we're gonna do a little round of this or that is that okay with you yes okay first Aerial or sup yoga? Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> um, aerial, um, it is all, absolutely my favorite, but getting out on the water and getting outside, ah, that's a hard one. <laughs> I would say aerial because it really is my true, my true go-to. Sunset Beach or Craig Park? Um, Sunset Beach. It was like one of the first places I fell in love with in our area here. Um, It's my place where I go to just catch the sun, get peace, hear nothing. Um, It's my it's my soul place. (laughs) So, a beach day or a boat day? Boat day for sure. Just being out there with nothing around. Sometimes to the islands and getting out and just floating around. You're very connected to the water, aren't you? Always, yeah. Mermaid life. (laughs) <laughs> so this is kind of a silly one but hummus or guac hummus oh my gosh yes <laughs> sunrise or sunset sunset they're beautiful early morning flows or candlelit evening flows early morning flows acupuncture or reiki acupuncture i um have yet to experience a full Reiki session, so it wouldn't be fair to, to kind of push it aside. But um, during that time of healing that I needed to take, I found acupuncture. Or better yet, Kari found me or reconnected with me um, because we had met years ago too. Oh, and wild. when that stuff went on, she had reached out to me. And after the first session, I left there or she left me and I laid in bed the whole rest of the day and I've never felt more alive after the whole experience. I had been without movement for like two weeks. I was recovering from the surgery and I needed something. I was low on blood deficiency and just couldn't feel great. We did an acupuncture session, we did a B12 shot and I slept for the first time since my surgery like an angel, and just woke up the next morning and was like, what is this? I need more of it. And we <laughs> continued to do sessions. We did twice a week for a few weeks, and then I went to a week and then kind of dwindled out a little bit. Um, but it, it really did a lot for me. It was really wonderful, and I recommend it to anyone, even just to get your chi right. Like you go right. in there for a few moments, and she gets the needles all in, and you close your eyes, and you just start to breathe, and whatever magic happens, happens. But it's really amazing. That's awesome. So, massage or foam rolling? I think massage. Um, foam rolling is really awesome. Um, if you don't can't get the massage kind of that you need, but massage is really wonderful because you have somebody who knows what they're doing, knows the muscles, knows what needs to be done to loosen up and release toxins so that you can get what you need from a massage. And the foam roller, I mean, you can move around into spaces that feel really good, but you don't get the same. You don't get that touch. Yeah, and the energy exchange, because you have somebody who loves what they're doing and cares about how you're feeling, and now they're, you know, helping you. So it's a lot different than just kind of doing it yourself. I definitely agree with that. Yes. Okay, instructor or student? Um, for me, mm-hmm. I love being a student. I do. I really enjoy teaching, but that's another hard one. Um, I would say a student 
I really get a lot um, back when I'm a student, and then I can take that with me into my teaching. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And the last question. This is the same last question I'm going to ask everybody and kind of to sum up the whole purpose of this podcast. What is the number one benefit of movement? Oh, there's so many. (laughs) The number one benefit is the overall health that you get mentally. Um, If you're feeling sad or lonely, depressed, and you move, the energy that you create inside reminds you that you're there and that you don't need anything else except for to just keep it moving, like move forward, just keep going. Um, I think it's important to move every day. Like we said, an object in movement stays in movement, and we're here to move. We're not here to lay around because if we were... I mean, what kind of life would that be? I don't even know what we would do. Yeah. So I think that it's important to move for your mental state and also for your physical. Absolutely. Well, Jess, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. It's been awesome. Thank you for asking me. Of course. Um, You can find Jess and the Gypsy Air crew on Facebook and Instagram. I'm going to link that in the description of the podcast. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the first episode of The Movement Enthusiast. If you like this podcast, please give me a five-star review on iTunes. And as always, I hope this inspires you to go out and get moving.